Welcome back to the outfit, where if you have videographic snapshots available like I do, you can clearly see that Deuce's left elbow is actually just a straight line indicating the edge of the frame. And in this part, we're going to switch over to Blood Valley Map, one of the more reddish and... Uh, uh, refreshing maps is the word I was looking for before I lost my train of thought while speaking. Going back to strategic victory win condition and showing once again why you should only play 300 uh, command points with good friends. Like my brother. My brother's my good friend. Okay, mm. then we got a quick start of 1000. We've got uh, field unit drops every, two, uh, every 200 seconds. Crops grow unusually well in this valley. Some say it's because soldiers have been fighting and dying here for millennia. We're in the French countryside. There's no way that, the, that this that this area is that fucking bloody. It's got a river on it. Need I refer you to the Hundred Years' War? Yeah, which only lasted about 12. Also known as the War of the Roses? Yeah, which only lasted about 12. 12 years? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a misnomer if I've ever heard one. Yeah, hundred year war. The hundred years war re realistically only has a couple of major conflicts in it, and um, a majority of those conflicts are, don't actually take place on on French soil. Yeah, the French and the British neighbors feuding, divided by a dam like castles. The English Channel. They said, no, it should be called the French Channel. The English said, no, we will fight you over it. And history has shown who won that particular battle. <laughs> Here, let's try picking stupidly high slopes for our cannons. Because remember, this is all about line of sight. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, how does the dude get on top of it? Good question. You're not even going to show a dude being on top of that cannon, are you? <laughs> oh, it's 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 shooting. He he's there, and it's hitting my brother. <laughs> see, uh, see, we actually we actually switch gears. Uh, now I'm the one playing as the Germans, and or or was he always playing as the Americans? He was Here, always playing as the Americans. Quickly, men, we have much work to do. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Three hundred strategic points. Uh, this is, and, and again, this is the king of the this is the king of the hill style uh, uh, type of game where you have to control uh, you have to control enough of the uh, strategic objectives in order to actually start in inflicting damage onto your opponent's supply. Correct. You can kill your opponent as many times as you want. Oh my god! You can't god. run out of time. Well, I mean, you can you can run out of time. We decided to put no time limit, so that's why this part, like the other strategic victory map before I got railroaded while I was sending my mine captain while Hans's head clips through the radio tower itself I like how the guy sitting in the wheelbarrow will actually point forward going that way take me that way faster faster you knave mm, okay so I had gone on record saying that I believe that the original Unreal Tournament uh, version of Domination, which is very similar to this, is a significantly better mode than Double Domination. However, a majority of the time when you were playing Domination in Classic Unreal Tournament, you had significantly smaller maps than this, and you were able to successfully defend them simply because uh, simply because time to kill in Unreal Tournament is relatively fast, but not so fast that you know it's uh, not so fast that it's unfun to play. This game, right. on the other hand, because we're actually using real, uh, we're using realistic "quote unquote" uh, ve uh, vehicles with their, uh, uh, with their, with their relatively uh, uh, consistent movement speeds. It's it's extremely difficult to get from one end of the map to the other in less than sixty seconds, and that's a huge problem in this kind of, uh, in this kind of, uh, in this kind of mode. Because if you're unable to get to any of the uh, to any of the points in under a minute. Then those po you're going to be constantly bleeding points whenever you start to fall behind. Run away! Run away! <laughs> you're already 20 points down, and we are no. You're just 20 points down, and we're nearly five minutes into this uh, into this fight. 
No, it's because losing command points is a slow process, and I highly recommend that players do not pick such a far-off one kid. Okay, okay, so here's what you do, right? First, check your fridge. If you have soda, play a short game. If you have beer, spirits, wine, play a long game. <laughs> uh, but even under a long game stipulation, I wouldn't actually want uh, 300 uh, as the score cap here. Uh, what is the lowest I score? Would. What is the lowest score cap that you can have for a strategic victory? Um, I think a hundred. One hundred, honestly, with this with this kind of map si with this kind of map size and style, would actually be probably fine. It would probably take ten minutes, and you know, uh, you get to explore a good portion of the map and uh, attempt to have decent skirmishes with your opposing player. Ah, uh, most I would go for two hundred. Well, you were break, you were talking about the the speed at which players are able to traverse the map from one side to the other, which, which is an interesting question, especially for a game where command of the board is paramount to success. So, but oh, gee, <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Landed right on top of him. Yes. Um, I digress, though. In the interest of game balance. If you're able to, well, I mean, you also have to consider that they're, they're using the exact same mechanics in campaign mode as they do for multiplayer mode. They definitely don't want players to just to just zip through the map in campaign mode because it would remove the challenge. They certainly don't want players to zip through multiplayer mode because that would help players literally run away with the game even more consistently than they do right now. So, I guess the question for the Rocket Rabbit crew, while we have another 20 minutes to uh, think of an answer, is did they strike a good balance in speed? They did not. Okay, and why do you think so? Our vehicles are too damn slow. Like Some of the vehicles are too damn slow. You, me you mentioned that it's some of the vehicles, certainly. But the thing is, if your vehicle is unable to actually... Uh, if your vehicle is, un uh, is unable to engage in combat with your opponent, then it's not worth actually running. So, the heavier vehicles, specifically the Calliope and the Panther, become one of the only... Uh, become the only viable options for the most part. I noticed that you're summoning a cannon car here, but, like, very explicitly, the only reason a cannon car is even potentially viable is because... Mike doesn't actually have an answer to it right now. He's uh, spent he spent all of his command points on two Calliopes, and then he ended up dying uh, while he was outside of them. <sighs> screen hacking, maybe. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell if one of us is screen hacking. I I would get I would concede I probably did a screen hack to ascertain that the cannon car was the best was the best vehicle to roll in right now, because I or uh, the only. The only way I could have just incidentally picked the cannon car would have been that okay, I just took out my I just took out my enemy's tank. I saw it happen. I did not need to look at the other side of, of the te of the television screen in order to get that information. I and knew for it, the so record, I made a screen hacking is not really a thing. Okay, these games are. It is. <laughs> uh, these games are, uh, these games are specifically designed are specifically designed with uh, with split screen in mind. I understand that this is supposed to have an online uh, on, on, an online player component as well, and <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, this is something that I would uh, this was something that I would potentially like to play uh, multiplayer uh, multiplayer online if I've got if I've got a partner uh, for screen uh, for, uh, for if I have a partner with me for split screen. My cannons are working. My God, I'm actually doing something that works. <laughs> See the big advantage the that you get from screen from screen uh, watching is, is the fact that you is the fact that both players get to continue playing the game. Mm. What that it, it it has like a balancing effect? Yes, as long as both players are actually doing screen watching, then both players get to actually uh, get, uh, both players have access to to the all to the, all the information, and with all the information, you can decide how you want to how you want to approach uh, specific engagements. Not, not in a. Uh, I mean, I, 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 mean, I agree with you that like it goes both ways. It, it honestly, it just, it just lends a different nuance to the game if both players are doing it simultaneously. That's why some game developers have went so far to make, 
screen hacking the game where you are supposed to look at your opponent's screen because you can't see where the other guy is unless you can ascertain from relative position by looking at the screen itself. Mm. Um, I know that Goldeneye and Perfect Dark are like the are the go the godfathers of this de of this debate, but both of those games have maps wherein if you're not looking at your if you're not looking at your opponent's screen, you straight up will not be able to find them uh, without prior map knowledge. And if you ha if you have prior map knowledge, even looking at them isn't going to guarantee that you know where they are. Go I think I think screen hacking was it was more of a problem in Goldeneye than it was a boon. Oh no, I couldn't make I it. I honestly the don't channel. think so. Like a, a good portion a good portion of the best moments in Gold uh, in Goldeneye specifically with friends hap that happen when both <laughs> when uh, when all parties are able to actually are actually able to skirmish with each other. And skirmishing with each other is only possible when, you know, everyone uh, everyone is at least aware of uh, of uh, of pathways in order to actually of uh, pathways in order to actually engage in combat with uh, with the other players. Yeah, maybe for slappers. I mean, okay, not even okay, for okay, slappers. You, like, if you Golden play only slappers has, only. Goldeneye only has a couple of of very powerful firearms that actually that actually makes uh, actually makes screen watching a problem. Perfect Dark, on the other hand, has several firearms that make screen watching a problem. And yet, I have I don't believe that I have ever been uh, I have ever felt guilty or been called out for screen watching in Perfect Dark. <laughs> you must have played with very nice people. I play with all. Uh, hey! He hijacked me. Yes, Mike hijacked you. He exploded afterwards, but I mean, okay. What what that did that that can't that cancels out me that that cancels out me hijacking him in a previous match. Okay, now 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 we're even. Okay, so we're going to agree no more no more hijacking each other's vehicles for the rest of this game session. All right, let's get a whirly bird. Well, fly. you're so far behind that you might you might not have a choice in the matter. Well, that's why some people may be compelled to break rules that we only shook hands on on agreed with. Maybe I had my fingers crossed. I was going to say that. Well, we were we're we're still on the discussion of you know how big is is screen hacking a problem or is it in it or is it something to embrace in a game like this? I think in this game screen hacking will unfortunately lead to spawn camping. Hmm. It's, just, it's a it's especially prevalent when there are only when when you're in the lead. And there are only so many different places where your opponent can spawn. He, his back is against the wall. You know where he is all the time. Maybe he only has one spawn zone left. And in this game, when you're out of spawn zones, you automatically lose the game. That, that's that's where I would I would draw the line. On uh, but at that point, the match has been the over for the for the past three minutes. You say that, but uh, there's still a lot of time left in this game, Mister Gerdat. Is My there? Guy's, uh, you're 60 points down at the moment. Like in order to actually come back, you need to. You, in order to come back from this, you need to not. On, you need to not only take um, uh, take both of these strategic objectives and hold them for another five minutes, but you also need to not. On, uh, you need to uh, be able to take down what Mike is uh, is doing. And Mike's got so so much more strategic um, uh, strategic spending points than you do that he can just reinforce. Uh, he can just reinforce these positions uh, significantly faster and with better equipment than you can provide. See, I'm the kind of guy who would almost apologize for beating for beating my opponent in a game. Um, so. Like, look at what Mike's doing uh, right here. He just put down four relatively heavy anti-tank anti -tank guns, and all and uh, all in the same area. Now that he's gonna go pick up, now he's gonna go pick up this field unit crate, which honestly are spawning slightly more uh, slightly more often than every three every two hundred seconds, and hit, and he is effectively just behind you in points again. So you, but okay. Now, now I was alluding to that which is gonna draw out this episode to the extent that it does. I had eyes on my opponent 
He was on foot, surrounded by a squad of four dudes, and I was rolling around in a goddamn machine gun tank. Why didn't I kill him? Well, it's because that's how I am, not only as a player, but as a person, was I looked at it like, hmm, how would I feel if I got run over right now, even though I'm already 50 points in the hole? I wouldn't have liked it very much, and that's why I turned the other way and decided to do something else. To be perfectly honest, Mike should be significantly, uh, significantly uh, farther ahead right now. Yeah, he he's, uh, he hasn't actually been playing the game, uh, playing the game uh, for objectives. He's been, just been trying to fight you. Yeah, he's he's uh, gonna have to work on that. This uh, this excruciating slow bleed right now. The Germans need to get for, for two of the zones in this map are not even under control. One of them just fell under control of Mike, who's playing as the Americans. So you you got to keep going after the strategic objectives. It's not enough to just cause your opponent to bleed points because it's going to take fucking forever, like it does in this game. Yeah, we're talking about a, a couple a couple dudes who just want to sit around, spend some time with each other, and well, nothing nothing puts minutes on the clock like deliberately slowing down the wind condition. All creatures in defense mode in Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, like oh, like that is a thing that's ever going to happen again. I mean, it could, eh, only in classic. See, if if me if me and my friends ever got back together and pulled out our old Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I don't even know where the fuck my Yu-Gi-Oh cards are anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we would be, my buddy would probably still be playing, uh, Legendary Ocean, uh, Mono Water. Okay, that's actually an extremely powerful deck of, uh, from Classic Yu-Gi-Oh, so... With, with that one, with, with Amphibious, Bugroth, MK, whatever, that not only is it a level 3, it also is allowed to attack directly if mm, because of Ocean is in play. Ocean, yeah. Yeah. See, that, that, that is, that, that's the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh that I'd like to go back to. Mm, amphibious, Bugroth with Robin Goblin. <sighs> <sighs> Perfect. Control, control. It's not even control, actually, because Amphibious Bugroth only needs to hit you twice, but be uh, before you're uh, you're so critically low on resources that he that uh, that uh, he just you know steamrolls the game from there. In a game with no summoning sickness. Mike has got in control of two of the three zones, and the Nazis currently control zero. And you're it's not quite a problem right now. You've been, you've been pushing to get this uh, radio uh, radio tower from him uh, for uh, for the past several minutes. I yeah. know, but why? Nobody's been calling radio strikes. <laughs> uh, Mike called one. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, why... Why, why spend 300 points on an aerial strike when you're just trying to get rid of a tank? Just, just what you do is you just spawn a 100-point machine gun nest and try to lure your opponent underneath it so that it'll fucking blow them up on impact. I see you. Mm, uh, apparently, you don't actually. All right, let's see. Who's getting what right now? Mike is gaining control of, of the, the third, third of the and third final two. point. Yeah. So right now, the, the the Americans are experiencing zero point bleed because the Nazis don't control any points whatsoever. Whereas the Germans you... are now going to experience maximum point bleed while also having the shit blown up out of them by a cannon. So this, so here's an interesting situation. One player controls all the utilities, but the other player controls all the strategic objectives. But Who you don't has have the, the real advantage right now. Mike, you don't have the points to actually capitalize on it. Whereas Mike has got a bunch of, uh, as uh, Mike has got a bunch of defensive uh, emplacements that are specifically geared towards blowing up uh, your heavier armor. So you can't, uh, you can't really push out into anything. And Mike can just sit here. He could. Oh, if, if Mike if Mike just just hides until I start ca actually capturing objectives back, this uh this is this is very quickly going to swing in favor of the Americans. So I'm losing the Germans are losing command points uh, every three seconds. I'm going to take myself out. Mm -hmm. Another field unit crate. 
Okay, now pass Cloud to that part of you that wants to be a fun and inviting player so that players will be interested in staying in the arena. You should really consider turning off that part and switching to the more competitive I'm going to squash the crap out of you if I have a chance mode. Yeah, especially since you're only 14 points in the lead now, so... Well, it gave, it gave a chance for some interplay among the players that did not necessarily depend on one player going after the win condition the whole time. <laughs> Dude, both of you haven't been going after the win condition for the past 10 minutes. No, no, no. Well, I mean, Mike, that Mike didn't, you know, just happen to get all of the strategic... Nina should have switched to the rifle to take that guy out. No, Mike, Mike made a point to go and get each of the objectives. Well, now the Nazis are finally taking one back. I guess, I guess there's a, yeah, there must have been, there must have been an AI soldier standing right next to the objective. It wasn't me. Somebody else did it. Which, honestly, that, that's, a, that's another thing that we haven't even gone into is, um, in this game, the AI can claim control of objectives as easily as hero units can. Not so anywhere near what, as easily because the because uh, the AI only uh, only really responds to um, uh, to player uh, to player commands. They don't actually go out on their own that much. They don't. So what you do is you put a you put a gun emplacement next to a strategic objective and then you go somewhere else. So not only are you advancing towards another objective, you're also current you also get into the process of capturing one. You know, just just like in football, like if the def if the defense can sniff out the offense's plays, then they're probably either going to shut down the play or they're going to intercept the ball. Um, in this game, similarly, uh, trickery can be your friend. If you can fake out your opponent into doing something they shouldn't be doing, like overextending, then you can turn the tide of battle. I'm gonna run you over. <laughs> You would spawn right next to me. You silly person. You shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. I think I just hijacked him. Yep, Not entirely sure him. if you hijacked him, but uh, uh, but uh, he most certainly was leaving the vehicle before it exploded. <sighs> this was a gentleman's game. Uh, now the favor has very thoroughly swung in favor of the Americans. Because now the Germans... Not only do they not have any strategic objectives under their control, they only have a single spawn point. It's the radio tower. If they lose control of the radio tower, they automatically lose the game. Now that's the thing that you did uh, that you uh, mentioned earlier in this part, but you didn't mention the first time we were going through this. It's it's. I mean, it's not the thing that is going to end the game. This game is going to end on the basis of points. Um, Ha, 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 ha. He fell for it. See? What, what was I just saying? Get, trick your opponent into overextending and shit like that will happen. Okay. He still has he still has the ability to uh, throw either a crocodile or a, uh, a quad 50 half truck at you. Uh, I don't think he's going to go for a quad 50. He, he is, he is going to go for the cannon car. Oh my god. Sometimes all you gotta do is uh, strap a potato gun to her and start firing off at your neighbors. I want a gun here. I okay, want a gun minutes. there too. It's been five minutes of gameplay. Somebody, somebody try attacking a strategic objective. Mike doesn't need to. You have to push into him. No, Mike, Mike is... Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike's rooks are currently cornering the chessboard. Uh, the the Nazi king is running out of moves because the guns are all pointed at the one and only spawn zone remaining for them. Right, Hans. Right, and he he probably figured out that that's where you spawn when you. Uh... Yep. Okay, it picks it picks a slightly different location each time. I guess the game had considered that spawn camping would be rather annoying. Oh, I'm just gonna kill at this point. I mean, we shook hands on it. 
I'm just, apparently I'm just gonna keep hijacking his car because he's already got a commanding lead, not only of the game, the win condition, the strategic objectives, this, the, the match in general, like, something's gotta, something's gotta budge here. Because remember, you can't get field units if you can't fucking leave your front door. Right. <laughs> Now, please tell me that the next time we do strategic objective, you guys knock it down to 200. Well, I mean, this is this is the longest episode of the outfit we have left in the series, so I'd like to think the answer to that is yes. I just want to live. Oh, boy. No. <laughs> No, you can't. You can't have it. You can't. I won't let you. Get away from my radio. Hey, where are you? Don't make me do it. Uh-oh. And... Oh, no, so very no. close. I know, I know, right? Son of a bitch. No, not yet, because there are still Nazi soldiers in the vicinity who can... Yeah keep me from losing the objective. All well, the Americans have been wiped out, so that you get to restore, is You get to restore your radio tower. But they blew up my radio tower, so I can't even use it. It's just a pile of smoldering rubble. Got every gun in France trained on that one building. The guy who's hiding behind it is an asshole. Mm. So, I think he wants to put a heavy machine gun next 100 meters out. <laughs> you might yeah, as well right start. here. Right here would be a, would be a uh, spot for another heavy machine gun nest. But now he's going to throw <laughs> another anti-tank cannon at you. So this is about the situation. Oh, and a machine gun nest. Actually, this is a flank. Oh, uh, that's a flak nest. Oh, well. This is, this is going to take, this is going to take us to the wire here. Um... There's no, there's not, not very much chance that the Nazis are going to be able to come back from this one. Yeah, you can't leave with, uh, with um, two heavy machine gun nests and two anti tank uh, tank cannons. You can never, uh, you need um, access to high explosives in order, in order to just leave your, uh, in order to just leave. And um, uh, the only high explosive character you have is the Germans, uh, is the rocket pistol. And do you actually have a rocket launcher aside from the rocket no, it's pistol? Just it's just it's just the Sturm pistol. And if it's just the Sturm pistol, no, the Sturm pistol requires multiple shots on the anti-tank guns in order to, in order to, in order to actually uh, uh, take anything down. All right, we'll try. Let, let's try just just disabling the fucking defense that's railing me right now. Mike, I know I just hijacked you two times. Just just be nice. <laughs> hmm. And again, this is why you want to pick lighter win conditions than wiping out all 300 points, especially in online mode. Um, games can get skewed, people can get bored. You want to say GG, but the game keeps right on going. Yeah. But we had some fun here on the couch. Hmm. All right, and in the next episode, the next episode we're going to be checking out even more six of the maps. Points. Yay. <laughs> oh, game balance. The idea is that players have fun. And That's we did the have fun. Be the safe, game. everybody. Yes. Thank you for watching. Remember to keep up your competitive spirit. For America.